Hey people, uh, welcome to 100 GB. This is Gaurav, your friendly neighborhood software engineer. So this is my first video on YouTube and I'll be talking about the work from home setup that I've made over here. Or you can call it work from home office or whatever you feel like. Quick pause, why you should listen to me? So in the present era, I feel like there are three things that are really important in this world. Uh, one is the knowledge, other one is learning, third is saving time. So I'll be I'll try to focus on all of these three aspects in my channel. Basically, I'll try to make your life easy by providing you with 100 GBs of information. Well, most likely around tech, gaming, maybe not so productive. Starting with the saving time thing. In this lockdown situation, I, I think many of you have considered working from, it's not an option, you have to work from home. And while in the process of making this work from home setup, you might have gone through a lot of products on the internet, figuring out what not to buy, what to buy, what kind of table, chair, um, and other wire management stuff you want to have on the table. So yeah, I, I will actually go through all the alternatives that I considered while I was building the setup and maybe recommend you a few products uh, on the same lines. So yeah, I guess here we go. Uh, yeah, so I've divided uh, the entire talking into eight and actually nine components all in all. Uh, okay, so the first component is the actionable uh, area on the table. With the entire, the entire tabletop is the actionable area, sort of. But uh, as far as the one who is using the desk is concerned, I think most likely this much or uh, I would say the bottom left quadrant over here. In, which in your case might be uh, maybe center, bottom center of the table as well. But I, I kind of thought that, okay, since the width of the table is uh, quite a bit, I will move towards one side of the table and have the other side maybe to keep my CPUs and uh, other stuff. I had an option to go with, uh, with, a, with a smaller mouse pad as well, but then I thought the table looks cleaner um, with, a, with, a bigger, with a bigger pad, which covers the keyboard as well. Well, in general, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? All the links in the description, by the way. Okay, so next part is the charging wires. So I will actually describe the entire wire management a little in the video. Okay, leaving, leaving my uh, Windows laptop apart. So MacBook Pro supports a USB-C type charger. My iPhone 6S, it has a lightning port. Yeah, so actually had I not been using my old iPhone as my primary device, I um, would have just removed this wire altogether. I just need it for my iPhone, that's it. The C-Type helps a lot because uh, so my wireless earphones, my laptop and my primary camera which is Pixel 3 AXL, uh, yeah, it charges everything. And this is actually the future, it kind of belonged here. So let's switch it back to my MacBook. All right. So you have put the extension at the back, put all your charges at the back as well and bring all the wires under the table and just use this small, uh, I don't know what, it, what it's called, I think it's, it's called a wire management clip or something but yeah, I mentioned the link in the description, it's pretty cheap, I guess 200 or 300 rupees and you get, you get around uh, 10, or, 10 or 12 of these. So even for this laptop as well, uh, I, I could have taken a similar approach. So there might be a case that I don't want to use my table for a while. I need to take this laptop uh, out of the room. In that case, I have to plug my charger and if I have the charger in this way, I have to do more work. So basically to save my time, I am not bringing this charging wire from the front. All right, let's go to the third component for today, which is the monitor and the monitor arms. I actually just brought my office monitor to my home before the lockdown. In case you are explicitly interested in this monitor because uh, this kind of has a lot of bells and whistles. To give you some sense, it kind of acts as a USB hub as well. It has a range of ports, two HDMI, display port, USB-C. It, it also supports USB-C video and whatnot. But I'll, I'll mention the link in the description. It's quite a costly one. If I would have chosen a monitor for myself, I would have taken the BenQ 27 inches. I'll mention the link for that as well. Now regarding the monitor arms, so I considered various alternatives on Amazon. So the problem with most of the best sellers on Amazon is that uh, those are not height adjustable in the sense uh, that every time you want to adjust the height, you actually have to uh, like unscrew and 
do a lot of things. So basically, you have to spend a lot of time and effort to do that. While this one, it's from a, it's from an organization called Rife Technologies. It's a dual monitor arm setup. I explicitly chose this one because both of the arms are removable. So that's why you you don't see one of the arms because I have removed it. <laughs> it's a gas adjusted one. It's very simple to install. You can do it yourself. Well, you need uh, you need one screwdriver, but I guess that should be fine. All the Allen keys and everything is provided along with the product. In the best case, it should it should cost you around seven k. Single one should I think. Uh, cost you somewhere around 5000 but if you're someone who don't adjust the height that much then you can go ahead with the uh, maybe the amazon basic one as well so yeah a six axis adjustable monitor arm what else you could ask for i think if you are uh, looking for a long-term solution for all your monitor adjustment needs this is one thing you should definitely buy all right uh, yeah so let's talk about the cpus for a while I think many of you might also have this weird situation where you have uh, your office laptop and your personal laptop. While uh, most of you might be doing all your personal things on your office laptop, which is totally fine. But yeah, in case you switch a lot and you have a monitor at your desk, that might be a big problem. Yeah, I'll get to that. First, let's see how uh, how have I placed these two CPUs. <laughs> so, and this is CPU stand or the uh, laptop stand that I'm using. I think it's pretty much on the costly side uh, because maybe of the build quality, it's pretty strong, rigid, heavy, so that it, it can actually take weights of uh, two CPUs. And the best part is it is adjustable. Depending on the width of your laptop, you can actually adjust it. So it's recommended by if you have a smaller table and you want to save a lot of space by putting the CPUs vertically. So there is a small reason that I haven't put this CPU vertically. If for some reason it turns off, I have to open the lid because the power button is over here. Yeah, so yeah, to avoid all of this, I thought it's better to keep it horizontal for now. So, so you might be wondering how am I able to switch between two of the CPUs? Well, this is quite a manual task as of now um, because I'm not I do not have this USB switcher, but I am eyeing two of them and I've uh, mentioned the link for the same in the description. So my mouse and keyboard are connected to the monitor. And from the monitor, I have this one USB-C wire coming, which for the Mac acts as a display wire as well. And I could see the display and my mouse and keyboard are attached to uh, the Mac. And for the Windows laptop, I'm using this HDMI wire. So HDMI solves the display problem because my Windows laptop doesn't support the Type-C video. But yeah, I still have to connect this Type-C with the Windows laptop for it to be able to connect to my mouse and keyboard. All right, folks, uh, this is it for the first part of the video. Uh, do give it a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And in case you're interested in the second part of the video, uh, you can go to the link that should be flashing on your screen right now. Uh, yeah, that is it. Bye-bye.